Psalm 33 Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for praise from the upright is beautiful. Praise the Lord with a harp. Make melody to him with an instrument of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully with a shout of joy. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his work is done in truth. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the peoples of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own inheritance. The Lord looks from heaven, he sees all the sons of men. From the place of his dwelling, he looks on all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashions their hearts individually. He considers all their works. No king is saved by the multitude of an army. A mighty man is not delivered by great strength. A horse is a vain hope for safety. Neither shall it deliver any by its great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us, just as we hope in you. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. And great are your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only 
shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great oh. Yeah. 
we are gathered again this morning to worship the Lord and to praise His name. Time flies so fast and we have reached the middle of October and we are praising God for His grace and love upon all of us that despite what we are going through, we know that His grace is sufficient. His power is made perfect in our weaknesses. So my dear brothers and sisters, join me today as we listen to the word of the Lord, as we come together and learn from Him, so that as we continue to face different kinds of trials in our lives, we know that God is in control. We know that God will continue to see us through no matter what we go through in this life. Let us pray. Today, Lord, we are coming before you in all humility and honesty. We thank you because we know that your grace is sufficient for us and that your power is made perfect in our weakness. Lord, in our weaknesses, we recognize that you are our strength. We recognize, Lord, that indeed you are the source of our hope and inspiration. And so we thank you, Lord, once again today that we can come and we can learn from you. We pray, Lord, that you will bless us with your wisdom. Bless us, Lord, with your presence. Holy Spirit, continue to teach us so that, Lord, as we learn from the Word, as we learn from you, we pray that you will continue to direct our steps, that we may be not only a channel of blessings to others, especially in this pandemic, but we will be shining for the Lord Jesus Christ because you have called us, Lord, not only to be saved, you have called us also, Lord God, because you have a purpose, and that is to really give glory and honor to your name and proclaim the gospel of salvation to others. Thank you once again, Lord, for this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Today is a beautiful opportunity for us again to learn from God's Word. And I would like to focus our study this morning on spiritual breakthrough in trials. Spiritual breakthrough in trials. I would like to read to you 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 6 to 7. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 6 to 7 says, So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Praise God for the reading of this word. Peter wrote this letter to address the believers who were persecuted in five different regions of Asia Minor during the time. It is with this purpose that he penned this letter in order to encourage them, in order to provide them hope to endure the sufferings that they are facing. Spiritual breakthrough is a turning point in the life of a person where he or she experienced God's mighty work. I repeat, spiritual breakthrough is a turning point in the life of a person where he or she experienced God's mighty work. Maybe we will think of, you know, when we talk about turning point or when we talk about spiritual breakthrough, a turning point happened into the life of a person. Maybe a person is being saved, that's a turning point into his life. Maybe an answered prayer, maybe a victory over sin, or maybe gaining deeper understanding of the biblical truth. So these are all spiritual breakthroughs that we can experience and becomes a turning point into our life. There are so many people in the Bible who went through difficult trials in their lives, but experienced spiritual breakthroughs because they have learned to believe that God walks with them in their difficult times. Today, 
we will learn three biblical characters with their own stories of trials in their lives, but experienced breakthrough because God was with them. They experienced victories upon victories into their lives. So we ask, why all these people emerged victorious despite the trials they went through? What could be the turning point in their life that enabled them to overcome their trials? Oswald Chambers said, We tend to use prayer as a last resort, but God wants it to be our first line of defense. We pray when there's nothing else we can do, but God wants us to pray before we do anything at all. It's a wonderful quotation. So what does it mean to have spiritual breakthrough in trials? Well, I would like to share with you three important principles. And in these three important principles, we, I will incorporate the stories or characters in the Old Testament. Spiritual breakthrough, number one, helps us see God at work in our life. Spiritual breakthrough helps us see God work at work in our life. So I would like to share with you this story of a man, a very handsome man in the Old Testament. Because of jealousy, he was almost killed by his brothers, but they decided to throw him in a cistern. You know him? Yes, Joseph. Joseph eventually sold at a very cheap price to the Ishmaelite traders and was brought to Egypt and became a worker under Potiphar's household. Through the course of time, God was with Joseph. God blessed Joseph in all that he does. And later on in his life, he was even accused of sin that he never committed, put into imprisonment because of false accusation. Despite of this situation that he experienced, the Lord extended favor upon him and eventually he was released from prison cell. God gave him the gift of interpreting dreams and his rise to power came as a blessing in preparation to the coming famine in the land. It was really a blessing that he rose from that position. He was placed into that power for a purpose. He became the governor of Egypt. It was really a divine appointment. He became, quote-unquote, savior of his family and nation during that time and learned that even though he went through so much pain into his life because his brother sold him, his brother almost killed him, he was working as a slave under Potiphar's household, but the Lord was so gracious to him. He learned to forgive his brothers despite what they have done to him. Despite what Joseph went through, he learned to see all his tragedy as God's working into his life. God's purpose of making him the savior of his family during the famine was realized. His rise to power was experienced because he learned to be faithful to God amidst trials. And that brought him to the pedestal of success. He learned to see God at work in his predicament. And his remarkable statement recorded in Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 says, You intended to harm me, he was talking to his brothers, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. When we see God at work amidst our pandemic and suffering, this becomes a breakthrough because it teaches us important lessons in life. One, it teaches us that God is at work for our best even at our worst. God is at work for our best, even at our worst. 
Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. God who is at work in all things, whether good or bad, whether favorable or unfavorable, no matter what you go through in this life, God is at work. He is at work for our best, even at our worst time. Sometimes your best blessings come out from your worst situations. Brothers and sisters, we need to understand that God is constantly involved in our life. He is at work even when we are facing the worst situation in our life. So we believe that God is at work. Number two, God is at work to accomplish his purpose. In Genesis chapter 50 verse 20, when Joseph was talking to his brothers, he said, you intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. The Lord's purpose why Joseph went through difficulties into his life he worked in a foreign land and he was able to experience God's favor into his life despite the many um, twists and turns into his life. God was with him and God would be committed to accomplish his purpose through the life of Joseph. And Joseph became a savior, a quote-unquote savior of his family and of, of his nation during the time. God's purpose of placing Joseph to power is to save the nation, Israel, from slavery and oppression. That is why we learn that today, spiritual breakthrough helps us see God at work in our life. Do you have bad times in your life? Have you experienced difficulties in your life? Have you experienced a situation that's seemingly hopeless? Well, always remember, God is at work for our best, even at our worst. And God is at work to accomplish His purpose. We know that His purpose will always be for our own good. We know that He is sovereign. We know that He is a wise God. That even when we go through mess in our life, he can turn those mess to become a message. Number two, spiritual breakthrough help us seek God's purpose in our life. So as you continue to see God at work in our life or in your life, second principle is that when we have spiritual breakthroughs, it helps us seek God especially his purpose in our life. And this is the second story or character that I would like to share with you this morning. Hannah was a beautiful woman, but unfortunately, she was barren. She was mocked by Penina, the other wife of Elkanah, her husband. Year after year, they go up to Shiloh to worship and pray. So that is a place where they can really come to the Lord and give all their petitions and prayers and worshiping Him. It is in Shiloh. Instead of being comforted, she was being laughed and ridiculed by Penina. Hannah's experience in going up to Shiloh was a torture for her emotionally and mentally. Just come to think of her situation, and you try to put yourself in her shoe. Every year, you go up to Shiloh to worship and pray and give all your petitions to the Lord. But along the journey, you will be hearing, you know, being ridiculed, being laughed at, being bullied. And so just imagine the mental and the emotional torture that she experienced. But her persistency in faith and prayer paved way when the Lord answered her prayer and gave her a son. 
what made me admire of her or made me admire about this woman is her word of honor. She made a promise to God that if she will have a son, if the Lord will grant her request to have a son, she will dedicate her son to the Lord. The Lord was so gracious upon her and the Lord granted her request. Knowing the attitude of this woman will really give you that kind of admiration. Because you know that this woman is a woman of faith, a woman of character. But knowing upon the attitude of Penina, the other wife of Elkanah, for sure she will not be giving Elkanah a godly children who will be his successor, right? Elkanah being a godly man deserves a godly successor. The prayer of Hannah was noble because she requested to God something that will not only release her from the curse of being barren and from being bullied every day and every year, but wanted to give Elkanah, her husband, a godly son who will be his successor. And in that way, Hannah became a quote-unquote savior to provide godly descendants for her husband, Elkanah. What can we learn from this story? You know, when we learn to seek God's purpose into our life, seeking God's purpose involves one, patience. We need to be patient in order for us to learn to trust the Lord no matter what. I know waiting is difficult. For some, waiting is really hard. And we don't want to wait. We, don't, we, we want that uh, when we pray, God will instantly answer our prayers. We are impatient people. But God is teaching us through the story of Hannah. Hannah learned to be patient. La Hannah learned to wait upon the Lord. She never gave up on her petition before the Lord. She never gave up praying and asking, Lord, please, not only that you will release me from barrenness, from the curse, and from the punishment of being barren, but she wanted to really give a kind of godly descendant to her husband, Elkanah. Secondly, seeking God's purpose involves perseverance. The Bible taught us to persevere whatever trials we go through in life because when we learn to persevere, we continue to develop our character and our faith and that we'll be able to be conformed in the image of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hannah was so patient that she persevered despite the pressure from Penina and from the community's standard and expectation. She believed on God and His power to hear her petition and situation. True enough, that the Lord granted her favor and she gave her a son and the Lord uh, really gave her a son and uh, his name is Samuel and so we praise the Lord we praise God that she gave her son to the Lord in dedication and she offered it to the Lord and so my dear brothers and sisters, when we have spiritual breakthroughs, it helps us seek God's purpose in our life. Thirdly, spiritual breakthrough help us or helps us submit to God's will. Another character in the Old Testament who experienced breakthrough in her life as a beauty queen. God gifted her beauty to make her the next queen who will save her people. Sounds familiar? Yes, it's Queen Esther. The Bible says in Psalm 139 verse 4, We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Let us face the reality. Some of us were created wonderfully, but some were fearfully. It's up to you whether you interpret that word fearfully in a literal sense. God strikes the balance here. 
Wonderfully means physical. Yes, Queen Esther was so beautiful. Fearfully, yes, Queen Esther possessed a godly character. Some people got these two qualities, right? Others just got one. So which qualities do you have? Sabi ko nila sa Tagalog, magandang muka, pero pangit ang ugali. Ano mas gugustuhin mo? O pangit ang muka, pero magandang ugali. Of course, madalas ang pinipili nila, yung maganda na lang daw na ugali. Kasi yung pangit na muka, pwede naman niya ipaayos. Kasi may belo na ngayon. Esther's beauty and character was instrumental during her time. When Persian Empire ruled over Israel, they were in exile as strangers. With the help of her uncle Mordecai, who had made a report to her about the plot of Haman, a powerful king's official to uh, having that kind of plan to annihilate all the Jews. He planned to kill all the Jews. Queen Esther used her position to inquire to King of Persia a serious request. Esther chapter 4 verse 13 to 16 says, Mordecai sent this reply to Esther. Don't think for a moment that because you're in the palace, you will escape when all other Jews are killed. If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place. But you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just such a time as this? Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai, Go and gather all the Jews of Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will do the same. And then, though it is against the law, I will go in to see the king. And this is what I like when she said, If I must die, I must die. You can sense that Queen Esther was so serious. She was committed to really provide a kind of uh, redemption for her people. Yes, Queen Esther learned to submit to the will of God even if the situation is unfavorable for her. She experienced breakthrough because God granted her favor and used her in such a difficult time. She became a savior for the nation Israel. With these personalities in the Bible that we have learned this morning, they have learned to see God at work in their life. They have learned to seek God in times of trials and they have learned to submit to God's will even if the situation is unfavorable for them. They all became quote-unquote savior of their era. These stories led us to one main story in the Bible, one main character, one main savior of the world and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. This is like the aha of digging deeper into the scripture, isn't it? You discover, wow, this is the plan of God. He used personalities in the Bible to project the coming of the Messiah who will save the world, the entire, not only nation of Israel, but the entire people into this world because he is the Redeemer. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 to 13 says, Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fierce trials we're going through, as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad, for these trials make you partakers with Christ in his suffering, so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world. Wow! My dear brothers and sisters, Spiritual breakthrough helps us see not only the situation, but helps us see God at work in our life. Spiritual breakthrough helps us seek God's purpose in our life. Spiritual breakthrough helps us submit to God's will. So with these three principles, 
I hope that as you go through difficulties and trials, sufferings and problems into your life, you will experience spiritual breakthrough so that you will be able to see God at work in your life, in your situation, that you will be able to seek God, God's purpose into your life. And that you will be able to submit to God's will. No matter what you go through in life, you will learn, Lord, I am willing to follow. With these three wonderful reminders for all of us today. May it be that we will continue to shine for Jesus. May it be that we will continue to be doers of His work. So that we may grow thereby in our spiritual walk. Let us come together in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for these wonderful principles that we have learned this morning with these three personalities in the Bible, Joseph, Hannah, Queen Esther. Yes, Lord, their life and their experience is not easy, but they have learned to see you at work in their life. They have learned to seek your purpose in their life. They have learned to submit to your will into their life. And so with this, Lord, help us also that we will be able to respond to all the trials and difficulties in our life, that we may learn to see you and be able to submit to your will and be able to seek, Lord, your purpose into our life. Be with us, Father, throughout this pandemic as you have been, Lord, since the beginning. And we are thankful, dear God, for seeing us through. May the love of God the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be upon us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. God bless us all. It's good.